In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about periosteal elevators. And you're going to wonder why I'm holding an explorer when we're talking about periosteal elevators. <laughs> and believe me, I was wondering the same thing. I was reading through a textbook. And it was a textbook from a guy in Korea who takes out thousands of wisdom teeth every year. Now, the reason he does it is because they have a different billing system in Korea whereby you don't get paid a lot to take out wisdom teeth. So it's a high risk procedure, not a lot of compensation for it, and a lot of dentists shy away from it. So he's just kind of become the guy. And um, he wrote a book on it and he talks about using the Explorer like a periosteal elevator. And when I read that book and I read that part, I thought to myself, this is really silly. Why would you ever do that? And you know, his approach to wisdom teeth, I should add, is really different. Uh, it's just something that's totally unusual as opposed to the way that I've seen it done or the way that I've learned to do it and the westernized way of taking out teeth. But even though his ways are unorthodox, I decided to kind of go along with it a little bit and I tried it a few times just to try it. And you should, I would say in practice, try things once or twice. See how you like it. Don't give up on something or dismiss it without testing it yourself because you may choose to do it in the future if you do like it. Now, in this case with the Explorer, why I started to like this a little bit for extractions, there's a few reasons. And in dentistry as a GP, you're often doing quadrant dentistry. So let's say that you're doing a MODO up here and then you've got an extraction to go on this upper left first molar. Now, one thing that you'll find with this is your access to get in around this tooth is really good. So what he does is he puts this down in the sulcus and he actually swoops it in around the tooth and he'll do the same over here. And the other thing that's kind of neat about this that a periosteal can't do is you can go between the teeth. So you can sever not only the buccal and the lingual periodontal fibers, you can also get the interproximal fibers. Now, the interesting thing about that is if you've ever seen, say, primary teeth, if you've extracted primary teeth, you'll know that you'll look at a PA or a bite wing of them. They don't have much root structure left, but sometimes those things are really stuck on there. And of course, when you go to take them out, they just kind of pop off the gum, but they're really tightly adhered. So these fibers shouldn't be downplayed when you're doing an extraction. You should consider severing them to make it a lot easier for yourself to get the tooth out. And using an Explorer actually allows you to do that a lot better than using a periosteal. So trying to get a periosteal you know, way between the teeth, it's just not going to happen. Now the other thing is, let's say that this is actually positioned you know, kind of like you'd be doing it in the mouth, right? This again, like I say, it's easier to get back here with this instrument to get in and trace around that tooth than it would be with a periosteal. And it just feels more natural sometimes. Plus, it's already on your tray because you would have had it out, say, with your kit when you're doing a filling. You don't have to break open another instrument. So the Explorer is actually very, very valuable in that regard as far as releasing some more of the tissue around the tooth. Do it a few times, see what you think. I was actually impressed. Now, am I solely on to using this? No. I've kind of gone back to the periosteal, but if it's around and I'm wanting to get my assistant's good books and not ever open more packages, I'll just say, you know, pass me the Explorer. I'll trace around the tooth to kind of release the tissue and then we carry on with the extraction.